also Gerhard. Yes, Ben. Travelling the world for the last however many weeks. You're not quite finished yet. Not quite. Still a few more interviews to go in a few more countries. But in order to get a sense of what you've been picking up along the way, I'd like to start by asking you a question that you've been inflicting on everyone else. <laughs> what is anthropology, Gerhard? In a nutshell? Yes. <laughs> you have one sentence. One sentence? Mm -hmm. well, all right. See how hard it is. For me, anthropology is the study of humanity in all its glory mm. and not so much glory. And <laughs> particularly, um, anthropology is method. And by that I mean ethnography, so participant observation, being with the people we study, as well as a lot of theory and theorizing about what that means, um, what it means to live with other people and how that unfolds. Hmm. I see that one thing that you've learned from your interviewees is how to stretch out a sentence. But <laughs> <laughs> it is. To Proustian proportions. Um, I was one, I was kind of curious actually, I mean obviously you've spoken with a lot of anthropologists who are situated along a whole spectrum of different um, approaches to anthropology or different focuses in terms of what they work on. Um, have there been any definitions that have really surprised you? I think one of the very first ones by Rob Borofsky where he equated anthropology with love. Huh. I'd, I'd never ha heard it um, talked about in that way. I think once we unpacked it a bit it made more sense in terms of anthropology being about relationships and I think that's that was a theme that a lot of anthropologists uh, touched upon mm. because it's it's so it's it's our primary focus you know the only way we can do anthropology is th through having relationships in the field with the people we work with mm. um, but I think love as a as a concept uh, anthropology as love was a was was new to me do you agree um, I think once we are, we're unpacking it as I said I, I do because it's about relationship and and also that anthropology is like a, a long-term spouse in a way, you know, it's a relationship <laughs> where at first you fall in love and you kind of go, wow, this is fantastic and amazing. Um, but after a while, perhaps you're, you become comfortable with it and it's not as exciting anymore all the time. And you have to find new projects perhaps that uh, excite you again. Um, but it's about perseverance too. And I think, again, that came through in a lot of the interviews when we talked about fieldwork. Fieldwork is not just um, the fantasy, you know, of going some other place that's exoticized often is, uh, in terms of it's very different and being with different people and exploring and, and it's not always great. Mm. Fieldwork is often very boring. You know, in the evening you come back to your room, you, you have to transcribe and write up the notes and think about what you learned today. And it can be a very lonely experience too. Um, you don't always connect and have those relationships straight away. It takes some time. So, yeah, I think, you know, unpacking it in that way, it is, it is like a, a long-term relationship that, that all anthropologists, I think, have with the discipline and with their field site. Has this tour put the spark back in your relationship with anthropology? Um, I think it's certainly reinvigorated <laughs> my, my love for, for what we do and, and to also highlight how privileged we are to be able to do it. Hmm. So, in terms of what you've been finding out about the scope of anthropology, why do you think it's important that people engage with such a broad swathe of different um, approaches to anthropology as opposed to, I mean, I mean, you've designed this course in a particular way, right? Like you're looking at a whole bunch of different, um, different angles, different perspectives, different viewpoints. Why do you think it's important to go for that breadth in this course? Because I think anthropology in particular is quite prone to, let's say, insular thinking at times. Because we work in depth in a particular place, it's often very easy to sort of see that place as one's, one's second world, if you like, mm. and see everything through the prism of that place. Um, but actually, anthropology, as I mentioned, is about a breadth of issues, of human experiences. And so it's important to also include the breadth of the anthropology discipline and how people do it, um, from the scientific to the very um, literary-based humanities uh, uh, vein. So, you know, from the novelist to the scientist. And I think anthropology, one of the, the great strengths of anthropology is that it encompasses all these mm. different methodologies, 
and also different experiences, not just of the people we study, but also of the anthropologists themselves. Mm. So maybe if you just want to talk us through this course a bit, like if I was to enrol knowing nothing about it, um, never having done anthropology before, what would I find? You would find my interpretation <laughs> of the breadth of anthropology, which is a, oh, a particular point of view, I guess. But um, this course we've designed into three modules. The first one is about Anthropology 101. It's designed to tell people who, or give, a, give people an idea who, who don't have a background in anthropology. You know, what is anthropology? And that's one of the questions we've asked lots of different anthropologists. What do they think it is and how is it done by anthropologists? And that relates to the second aspect of the course where we follow anthropologists from the University of Queensland into the field and mm. actually document field work. How, how do anthropologists do what they do? Um, how do they relate to the people that they work with? And so the, the first module is to set up the discipline and the role of the anthropologist. The second module is on indigeneity, and partly because um, anthropology at, at Queensland is sort of has a strength in that area, but also because I think it's a really important aspect um, in terms of identity and in terms of current debates about who we are and how we fit in. Mm. And so I indigeneity in Australia, but also more, more globally. How do indigenous struggles play out in different parts of the world? And the third one is, is called Life Within Limits, and that's based on a, a book by Michael Jackson, the anthropologist, um, who we've also interviewed. And in his book, he deals with the issue of well-being. How is it that people live well wherever they are? And his conclusion, and we also talked to Paul Stoller about this, both of their conclusions really are that well-being or um, how people live a fulfilling and meaningful life is not based on what the United Nations measures it in, for instance, you know, monetary terms, numerical terms, but it's about, again, relationships. It's about how people live together uh, in different parts of the world. And so in that, mo in that module, we, we look at places like Cuba and issues of material culture, um, how people live with fewer things under the current sanctions uh, and what that means to them. Uh, we're going to Chile to work with uh, Sally Babich on water scarcity mm. in the Atacama Desert and how mining companies who've come in uh, are dealing with that and indigenous people, um, the conflicts that arise and the, the possible solutions that also arise. And then my own work on refugees in Malaysia, again highlighting how people can actually make a life for themselves under very difficult circumstances. Mm -hmm. So these are, I mean, pardon me for pointing it out, but these are all issues that are really important, but they're not issues that are, that solely fall under the gaze of, of anthropology as a discipline. So I'm wondering, as someone, I mean, let's keep up with this game that I'm someone who's never done anthropology before, doesn't know what the discipline's about. Why do you think it's important to look at these sorts of issues through an anthropological lens? Like what's different about anthro anthropology that makes this particular focus important? Well, you know, my, my background is that very, very long time ago, I started studying law and, and economics and ran away very quickly. Ah! And then I studied politics and international relations and sort of also moved more towards anthropology. And one of the reasons is that particularly this, this issue of the anthropological lens and mm. how it offers a different approach to these issues. Mm. Um, and I think the the main benefit of anthropology and the anthropological lens is that depth that anthropological works and ethno eth our ethnographic uh, work um, provides. Because we spend years living with people, it's not that we're better able to describe the, the issues perhaps, and we're probably not that good actually of, of, of getting it out to the public, but I think it's that we have data that is probably more meaningful mm. because we talk to the people one-on-one -on -one and we collect stories about what it's actually like to live under sanctions for instance or live under a dictatorship or live with violence everyday violence for instance so I think we have on the one hand it's a bit of a dilemma we have very powerful stories to tell but I think anthropology as a discipline hasn't been the best at actually telling them to, mm. to a broader public and this course is hopefully one way of getting some of those stories out. Hmm. What are you um, What are you looking forward to in the rest of the trip? We haven't gone to Cuba and Chile yet, so that's something I haven't been to to both of those countries. Hmm. Um, but actually, this, this these past two weeks, just interviewing fellow anthropologists, has been really really interesting. And 
um, a great experience um, mm. to actually ask the people that we read all the time interesting questions about what it is that got them into anthropology, mm. what it is that keeps them in anthropology and ask precisely the questions you just asked me. Mm. If I was to enrol in the course, um, ideally for you, once I'd gotten to the end of this course, what do you reckon is the main thing that you would have liked for me to have learnt? I think the main thing is, is to reflect more and think more. Um, the tagline is challenge your view and I think that's, that's essentially it. Mm. Um, one key issue or in anthropology is the issue of reflexivity. Um, that when the anthropologist goes out into their field to try and leave behind the cultural baggage they've brought with them. And that's impossible. But the process of thinking about the world views that we have, the cultural baggage we carry with us all the time, that process is really important. Mm. And it's the same when you're watching the news. To start thinking about what does that mean? Mm. Why am I thinking about it in this way? Mm. Uh, that's, that's really the, the first step, I think, in reimagining the way we relate to the world and other people. Huh. How has anthropology changed the way that you relate to that? I mean, I know that that's a really <laughs> big question, but I think it's interesting. I think one thing is it's, it's taught me more empathy with, with others. And it's, it's really, it's one of those things of learning about a completely different way of living mm. um, that's, that naturally opens one's eyes to, to other experiences. And, you know, my, my first work was working within a different religious context. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't very religious before, but it opened my eyes in terms of how people see the world and the world around them in, in very different ways and how there's no, you know, it's again something we've talked about throughout the course the issue of cultural relativism, mm -hmm. um, to think about other ways of seeing the world um, as not being better or worse, mm. but just to think about that there are other ways of seeing the world. Mm. Do you think that that's the sort of thing that can be learnt through academic study or do you think that's more something that you have to learn in the field? Well, that's the, the good thing about anthropology, you, you do both. Mm. <laughs> so I think it is, all, it is, in the end, it's all about practice. Mm. And even academic study is practice. Mm. So I think you can't really divorce one from the other. But mm. certainly field work is instrumental for how we do, what, how we do our work. So mm. absolutely, it's, it's about field work. Hmm. Has there been anything along the course of your interviews that's really taken you by surprise or stood out in particular? Or Perhaps not so much surprise, but stood out is the precarity of the work that we do, um, both in the field and uh, how quite famous anthropologists, you know, whose work we read and go, wow, you know, long term field work under very trying circumstances, how do they do it? And in the interviews, they, they really opened up and, and told us that, yeah, you know, they were bored, they got depressed, you know, there were all sorts of issues that we share within the community, right? Mm. Um, because it is a very trying practice, field mm. work. Um, so that was one. The other issue of precarity is the job market. And I think it's come through, especially in the, in the United States, of the education system at a tertiary, but at all levels really, is under intense stress mm. at the moment. And we're feeling it, our students are feeling it, and I think it's putting a lot of pressure on what is often considered to be a, a sort of soft social science, you know, anthropology. And especially in the US, there was a lot of debate. I think the uh, governor of uh, Florida basically said it was a useless degree and it's come out in some of these Forbes uh, rankings as uh, a bad degree to get into because of all the student debt that you incur. But I think it's, it's invaluable on a personal level. But of course, you know, what, what sort of high paying job are you going to get as an anthropologist? There actually are a lot of them, um, but people don't think about it and I think they shouldn't think about it going in. Mm. You know, to study anthropology is not to set yourself up for a professional um, or a profession and earning lots of money. I think no anthropologist gets into the discipline for that reason. Mm. But the stress and the precarity of within the discipline, I think that was not shocking, but it was certainly, it took me by surprise. So. 
In terms of the suite of interviews you've been doing and the sort of data and resources that you're pulling together as part of this course, I mean, this might well be a first, right, to pull together interviews with anthropologists from all different parts of the world under one umbrella course. So I'm wondering, what, what do you see as unique about, about this MOOC as a, as a resource, you know, like as a, as a body of information and, and interviews as well as a, as a course that people can do? Um, I don't think it's... It's not the first of its kind, I guess. I'll go on. Ah, I know. Um, a little bit. But I think what is, what is sort of unique is that the MOOC in itself is, is like a modern day textbook, if you like. And it's online, it's for free. Mm. And so once the course runs, people can take the course and be part of it, but it'll sit there as a resource going forward. Um, the interviews are all a resource that are freely available on YouTube. Um, that are part of the course, but also sit quite separate. Um, and I think the, the whole MOOC experience for me has been about using this relatively new uh, concept, the MOOC, which is actually based on a very age-old concept of just distance learning, uh, now through the internet, um, but by broadening it and by creating new anthropology resources. There are already a suite of fantastic resources on the, on the web, but I think what this course does is it, it ties things together. So it looks at a range of current world issues. Most of the anthropology courses that exist on, on, on edX or on other platforms are sort of more based on um, the four field anthropology here in the US, archaeology, that includes archaeology, biological anthropology, evolution. Mm -hmm. So I think this is actually the first social anthropology course on edX. Um, there are some others that focus more on um, psychological anthropology or other issues, um, but it brings brings together what anthropologists actually do, how they do it, and applies it to a, a couple of different world issues, and has created a whole raft of extra resources that anyone can use, and hopefully they will. Hmm. I'd be curious to know, actually, I mean, here we are wandering around New York. Do you think that the fact that you're here in part as an anthropologist, does that affect the way that you wander around these kinds of global cities? I mean, New York, Boston, Hawaii, Malaysia, all of these places. I mean, is, is the experience of seeing these places for the first time different because you have your background in anthropology? Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't think as anthropologists or most anthropologists don't separate work from life. <laughs> um, life is work and work is life and it's a privilege. Um, it's also a curse sometimes, <laughs> but it's generally a privilege because Wherever I go, I usually have a notebook with me and, you know, if I see something very interesting or something that just makes me think of my own work or relates to other work that I've done or I'm doing or thinking of doing or it just starts a new project, mm. um, jot it down. And so I think, you know, because anthropology is all about how people live their lives in this world, um, it's all around us all the time. Mm. And so we we can't but think about, ah, oh, what are these people thinking? Let's have a chat to them. Mm. <laughs> and that's how we wander through life. Mm. Um, always thinking about others and ourselves in, in that relationship. Mm. So absolutely. I mean, yesterday I was sitting at, uh, on a plaza and just hung out and started talking to the people next to me and gave them cards about the course, but also just chatting about what is life like in New York for New Yorkers. Mm. How have the places been then? I mean, we've spoken about how the interviews have been with the anthropologists, but what about the places that you've been through? Has anything stood out um, from what you've seen or experienced of these cities? Or Well, the city is actually, yes, but more so I think what was really interesting was that fellow anthropologists opened their homes to us. Mm. So we actually got to go to people's houses and just seeing how other anthropologists live and, you know, home decor, or, but also what do they display? I mean, all around us there's the performance of identity, who we are, right? Mm. And no, nowhere more so really than in, in a person's home where they feel most at home. So it was very intimate but, and, and interesting to find out what people... I'm not going to spill the beans on, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, who had the most interesting home decor. Um, but I think it's really interesting to, to get to know people through through the, the artifacts or the material culture that they surround themselves with. Have you kind of accidentally been doing an anthropology of anthropologists? Is that oh, what you're I saying? Oh, I hope so. I hope so. Maybe <laughs> that's so a, meta. <laughs> maybe that's my next project. <laughs> Write a paper about 
anthropologists at home. <laughs> <laughs> at their home. <laughs> yeah, wild. What about following fellow UQ anthropologists into the field? Again, a huge privilege because when, when we do our work, when I do my own work in Malaysia, um, there's never another anthropologist around um, to check what I'm doing, right? <laughs> um, so it was a huge privilege to accompany other anthropologists into their field and experience how they, you know, the methods they use, how, mm -hmm. they, how they do participant observation. Hopefully we'll get, get some of that across in the course um, to, to show everyone uh, what it's like to be an anthropologist mm. in the field that, that you work in. And, and hopefully we'll also demonstrate the, the great variety and difference in those fieldwork experiences. And certainly, you know, working with refugees in Malaysia, it was a huge, a huge leap to, to work in northern Queensland um, with David Trigger and, and, and Richard Martin on indigenous, non-indigenous relationships up there um, in, in remote, remote Australia. It was a very different experience, you know, how they, how they live, how they do the interviews, how they relate to people. Um, certainly very different to how I do my work. Mm. But it's very interesting to see that, again, variety in, mm. in how people do it. Mm. So, I mean, in terms of this course very generally, why do you think it is that anthropology is important in the world? Well, as an anthropologist, obviously, <laughs> I'd say it's very important. But I think, as we've talked throughout this interview, really, the main, the main issue is around relationships that we form. And you would have to be a very serious hermit to never have a relationship or never encounter others. So anthropology as the study of humanity in all its variety and difference is really the study about others mm. to reflect upon ourselves. Mm. And we're always surrounded by others, you know. Living in this world is a constant being with others, being surrounded by, interacting, going to the shops, talking to you, talking to anyone, is always about relationships and how these relationships unfold. And anthropology has lots and lots to tell us about those relationships, the political economy of them, the, you know, how societies form, what, what is the glue that keeps them together, um, when, when does the glue come undone and society is sort of um, erupt in violence or in conflict? That's what anthropology is all about mm. and we are living it every day. So I think everybody <laughs> should study more anthropology to better understand their own place in this world and certainly the way they relate to others around them. Mm. Good answer.